this is a brand new bigger kit and as you can see it's a very impressive kit the photo which is very nice hello this is bj from hearns hobbies and i'm going to be doing an open box of a new main kit so the particular kit is this one so this is the 124 scale uh Fokka dl1 which have just released uh and it looks like one's already been released before but actually it's a different kit altogether so the one that was released before was actually the 132nd scale kit of the Fokka dl1 and that was the one that was um being tooled up for wingnut wings so that ended up being the last Wingnut Wings project that uh, was made ready to the market, which was finished off by Ming, who provided the decals and the rest of the instructions. So it was a semi Wingnut Wing, but still a very good quality kit. So what we have here is a bigger kit now. So rather than 36 scale, it's been pushed up to one to 24 scale, which gives it greater scope of having more things inside. And uh, also it's, um, it'll be interesting to see how this differs from the original kit. So I've just got this here. So from the overhead, you'll be able to see this particular version. You can get this as a just the, the basic kit version or this one with the blue uh, sash. This is the one with the um, uh, additional uh, metal inside. So it has a replica one to one scale of the blue Max. So it's called that because it was uh, uh, named after uh, Max Ilmerman. Actually, it was available uh, much earlier. So it was developed by the, uh, the king of um, Prussia in the 1700s. Uh, and it was offered to uh, the highest uh, military and civil um, uh, awards at the time. And it just had the Blue Max stuck to it from the World War uh, One. So it's called the Blue Max. It's a nice addition inside. Uh, and let's have a look inside to see what the kit is like and then also what the special edition medal looks like. So we'll just slide this off here. So this is what the standard version would look like. Same box, it just doesn't have the boo slash. All right, so I want to open it over here. Let's put this here. All right, so we've got a little bit of paperwork. So got this from Ming. All right, so let's get straight into the kit. Let me move this aside. And we'll look at some of these. Okay, there's a first piece of sprue. As you can see, it's quite chunky. When you feel it, it's very weighty. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is it resembles a 30 second scale kit, but I think there has been some enhancements as well. So the, the CAD itself has probably been expanded so that everything is thicker, but the thickness of it is not such a problem, I think, because it gives quite a lot more robust structure to a flimsy sort of uh, uh, multi-winged aircraft like this. Okay, biggest difference I think see here. So there's a big strut across the wings, which is very thick. I think you see the reinforcing rib all the way through them as well. Because the problem with making bigger wings is this could quite easily sag. So when you've got the struts attached to these, it's going to be very, very rigid. Okay, so you can see there's already been quite a bit of improvement over the 30 second scale one, just to, to make it handle the particular size. Okay, so here you've got the, uh, the, the classic round vertical uh, stabilizer. Over here you've got the top and the machine gun um, components for uh, the cockpit. Uh, you've got the fuselage large sides here. Now one particular thing to sort of see, see if we can get that focus along here, is the detail for the the stretch on the uh, the fabric wings. It looks very very natural. I think it's more important in a bigger scale to get this right than on a smaller one. So you can see the uh, uh, the tack lines here which would have been used for um, uh, attaching the fabric onto the ribs. So it's got that natural dip just sort of underneath. Over here you have the, uh, uh, the aerodynamic shape, which is uh, like, a, like a mini wing for the undercarriage. And just by looking at this fuselage, you can get a good idea of, of the size of it. Okay, so that's going to be probably close to a foot long by the time you finish with it. All right, so there's a big chunky bits there for the fuselage. All right, over here we get even more chunky bits. Okay, so we've got wings here. Okay, so as you can see, they're multi-piece. Again, you can see the reinforced trusses here, which is really important, I think, to keep its shape. So even if you just try to bend them, you can always already feel the stiffness. And by the time you get the other side connected, it's going to be a very strong torsion box type of construction. So you've got the the middle wings here as well 
and then we've got uh, some of the, uh, the the struts here for support all right nice and chunky okay over here we've got some of the more intricate parts so we've got the uh, the triangular shaped um, uh, horizontal stabilizer we've got some props here so like the 30 second scale one there were a variety of shapes of prop and there is another one again there's a broader prop uh, which I'll show you in a in a moment now you've got uh, you got the firewall you've got the cockpit you've got the cockpit seat you can get a good idea of the size of the, the seat itself you've got the framework for each side of the cockpit because bear in mind that when you look into this one you're going to see a lot more interior detail than you would on the 30 second scale one because the cockpit opening is so much bigger so over here we've got uh, uh, I think that's the floor uh, so you can see how that's been uh, uh, you can see the twine where that's been held together with the uh, the fabric and then with the machine guns the machine guns are actually molded in one piece so you can see them here they're very nice and crisp okay you can see them from this side so quite nice so there is some photo etching, and I think the photo etch of the jacket is included as well. So we'll see it in, in just a moment. So actually, I, I can just sort of answer my own question. So you see machine guns here again. So these are machine guns with just a barrel. So these are the ones which would take the uh, photo etched um, uh, ventilated uh, covers. So you have your options. You can do this with the photo etch, because photo etching with the uh, rolling it can be quite difficult if that's too difficult for you you can just use the ones that are fully molded here okay so we've got uh, wing struts uh you've got uh, uh, throttle control along here we've got uh, the pedals uh there's a flare gun here and then some of these other bits that i don't recognize but we'll look at those in the manual okay so nice the fabric particular details are really nice because they have all the creases in them a bit of sag okay let's move on to this part here so we have some wheels and some control surfaces now what do we have here are they identical they are identical so You're going to have extra wheels, I think. So I don't think there's any difference there. I think they're both D sheets. Yep, they are. Okay, so there's probably other bits that are going to be uh, used throughout, which uh, they've uh, multiplied by giving you the two. So you've got the undercarriage wheels here, the tires, the wheels. You've got the ailerons as well. They're on the sides. You see they're separate, so you can have those uh, set to whatever position you like. Very small little details here. Okay, so the underside of these fuse uh, the air lines are also sort of curved, so they have the, the fabric shape in them. And again, I'll look in the instructions to see where all the other bits and pieces go as well. Okay, so that's that part there. All right, so here we've got the uh, the cowling. You got the engine cowling here, and then another couple of different props. And again, there's a different um, uh, undercarriage section there. Here you've got the uh, the joystick. I'll try and let you see that joystick section there. It is actually really complicated. So all molded in one piece makes it easy. Makes the uh, parts count lower. I mean, some people like parts counts because of the complexity of it. But uh, without that, I mean, you have a very very nice detail there anyway. Okay. All right, final bit of plastic. So here we have the engine. So you've got the radial engine. Again, let's see if you can see this. There's some very fine uh, detail in the cooling ribs from each of the cylinders. And then also the ends of the cylinders have very fine ribbing as well. And I think this is less noticeable in the small scale. It's definitely much clearer here in the bigger scale. So then you've got your exhaust stacks, you've got uh, push rods, and then all the other components of the engine. So you've got the uh, uh, the prop shaft 
and uh, uh, the prop nuts. Okay, very nice. All right, from there we've got uh, this little box here. This comes with all the photo etch. So if we open that up, they're actually very well protected. There's a bit of foam in here. Oh, so now I see what they're talking about with the photo etching of the uh, the barrel surround. So these look like, let's just pop one out. See that? So this looks like it's already been pre-rolled for you. Because something that's perfectly cylindrical like this is incredibly difficult to to roll yourself if it feels flat. So that's a nice touch. So actually there's no reason to not use this because of the difficulty. I mean, that's, that looks fantastic. You'll be able to see straight through the, uh, the ventilation and see the barrel underneath. So that's a very nice touch there. So obviously there's two of those for each machine gun. And then underneath this foam section here, we have the rest of the, the photo wedge. Okay, so that's the rest of the photo wedge here. You'll be able to see these are, these are all the buckles for the seat belts. And then the ends, there's the sights for the machine guns. And this is actually quite a heavy brass, which is nice. So it's quite strong and stiff. It also has a traditional, uh, I guess it's, it's not so traditional, it's what's commonly found now on photo wedge, and that's the tape that holds it all together. It makes it so much easier. So when you're cutting all the parts off, it doesn't flick off anywhere. And if I have a closer look at this, you actually don't need to cut any of it off because it appears to be all um, support free, which makes it even easier again. So you just need to peel these off, pick the photo wedge off the tape, and then you'll be able to use it straight away. So that, that's a nice finesse. All right, so that's a little box of um, photo wedge, nicely packaged and protected. Slide all these back inside. Quite impressive. All right, so let's just close that up. All right, so from there we've got some clear parts. All right, so there's a clear parts there. So you got little windscreens. So it looks like a couple of different shapes. Something that looks like a heads-up display, but I didn't think they had head-up displays back then. They could have. And then a few little lenses. So probably for some uh, headlights or navigation lights. All right, so from there we've got a huge decal sheet. Well, it's massive. Well, one of the reasons it's so big is because you've got a big scale of kit. And then you've got all the different markings here as well. So you've got the standard crosses, like straight edged, and then there's curved ones as well. You've got all the, uh, the various um, uh, serial numbers. So there's four serial numbers to choose from, and we'll find out who uh, flew those and what sort of colors they were in just a moment. So over this section, we have some fabric effect seat belts. So they've already been die cut, and they appear to be in a vinyl type material to look like leather. It's reminiscent of the earlier Tamiya F1 cars, which they used to have these seat belts as well. So that's nice. All right, what do we got here? Okay, so before we get into the uh, the instructions. Let's look at this particular metal here. So this is the Blue Max, and that's a full scale replica. So this is all fabric. Got a metal casting here. It's all pre-painted. All very nice. So this will look absolutely fantastic next to the uh, the finished model. Well, it's something you could keep away as a keepsake. It's in a nice little case. Okay. All right, so from there we get onto the documentation. Okay, so that's all kept together in this little plastic bag. So if we just quickly open this, we'll have a closer look in the instructions. Just carefully opening. Okay. 
All right, so what do we have here? Let's see. So we've got some cards. Got some information cards about the DR1. There's a little bit of history behind the designer of Fokker. And uh, you've got uh, different aircraft. So this particular version, this is all in Chinese. Okay, so you get Chinese version over here. We've got English. Okay, so describing the Flying Dutchman because Fokker is a Dutch company. There's a history there. Some more. And then we have Japanese. And then we have, uh, I guess that's Russian. And that's it. Okay, so these are your, your history cards. And then we get onto the manual. So the manual has quite a number of um, pages. It's quite a compact, small manual. Full color is nice. And then open it up and it gets straight into the building. Okay, so there's a, uh, a guide here of what sort of uh, tools you need. And then these are the different versions. So four versions, some of them are quite colorful. So let's see if I can hold that up there. So you can see those versions there. So I'm not sure if there's a Richoven uh, type, but uh, we'll see towards the end. Okay, so they start off with the, uh, the seat belts. So here's the, uh, the, the fabric material, which is uh, then threaded into uh, the harnesses, build up like such. And then we're getting into the cockpit. So building the seat, you have the, uh, the big cushion, goes onto uh, the rear wall seats are put in uh, the seat belts are put into the uh the harness over here is the construction of the inside of the cockpit so you've got a few dials happening here you've got the uh the foot pedals and here's the size which we saw earlier so you've got the floor here with the joystick and didn't notice before, but it looks like there's two to choose from. So uh, the A and C version use this particular one, and then the B and D version use this one. So slightly different shape within the top of the, uh, the control column. Over here, you've got the throttle control, which goes on the side, there's a floor. You've got the cockpit uh, seat, uh, which is glued into the side. The floor goes in, uh, the instrument panel, and then the other side. So there you go, you've got your sub-assembly of the cockpit. So from this point here, you've got another um, uh, brace. And then this is the option of rigging. So you can use uh, uh, easy, easy Line just to quickly rig that up. And that'll give a, a lot more uh, essence, I guess, and uh, interest to the inside, particularly with the control surface here as well. Okay, so from there, this is a preparation of the inside of the fuselage. So the fuselage is uh, getting uh, painted up, ready for sandwiching the cockpit. You've got the holes in place. Uh, and then this is all connected together. Okay, so from there, you've got the, the base of the fuselage is going in. You've got the firewall getting ready to accept the engine. Uh, the little skid down the back. And then some panels added. There's optional panels depending on which version. You've got the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, uh, and then the struts going on. Okay, so this is the top part to um, seal the cockpit. This is basically where the machine guns are going to go. So you've got the supports here. These are the uh, the wing uh, sides. So you've got your top and your bottom. So this is the truss system, which I showed you earlier to keep it all stiff. So you glue those together. You've got the top of the fuselage cockpit section on top. And then that's fitted on top of the fuselage. So you can see here how they're getting ready to put the struts to support the upper and then the lower wing. Okay, so here we've got uh, the lower wing going in place. So constructed a similar way. You've got the trusses there as well, keep it stiff. And then you've got skids on the corners there. And then that's glued onto the bottom of the fuselage. Over here we've got the construction of the machine guns. So 
this is where we saw earlier. So you've got the machine gun uh, with the barrel exposed. This is the brass uh, cooling jacket which just slides on. And this is the photo which uh, aiming uh, ready cool. A few extra bits to put on. So you've got uh, the feed for the, uh, uh, the ammo. And then also the, uh, the chute to guide out all the used cartridges. So you've got, uh, I think you've got your left and your right here. And then they're connected together and they're mounted within the cockpit. Okay, so like so. So already you can see how much is going on within the top of the cockpit. And this is what it looks like uh, within, if it was sectioned. Okay, so then you've got your final wing, which is your top wing. And let's put together, you've got the aerolons there. And then... That is fit across the top with some extra bracing. Here you've got the aerodynamic um, uh, undercarriage. So again, there were the two versions which we noticed. So I guess one's longer than, uh, well, thicker than the other. So you have your choices. So the BD version uses this version and then the AC version uses this particular type. And then you put the wheels on. Okay, so there's where you've got your options there for your two different types. And you can see the trailing edge there is a bit longer on that version. So they're glued in, and then you start on the engine. So two halves of the, uh, the radial are put together. Uh, different options here for the prop shaft. Here you've got the ends of the cylinders going on. Uh, you've got your uh, exhaust and your intakes, or push rods actually. That all goes together, and then the engine is mounted on the firewall with the cowling put in place. And then from there, there's a choice of the two different uh, propellers. You paint those up in a nice wood finish that goes in. And that's the uh, completion of the uh, construction. So here, this is where you choose what particular version you like. Okay, so the A version here. So this is uh, for June 1918. This is a uh, uh aircraft. So you can see how colorful it is. Now there's, I didn't notice in, there to be decals for this, but let's have a look. How many sheets are there? No, there's one sheet of decals that I can see here. So all of these uh, would need to be painted in unless you can find a particular decal sheet to fit this. So there's a bit of a challenge there, but that looks really good. Okay, next version, this is, uh, so you do have the Red Baron. This is uh, uh, Van Richthoven's aircraft. So, classic Red Baron. So some people thought they were totally red. I think it did get repainted a few times, but th this is the version uh, paint scheme it should be in. So it's predominantly red. Interesting with the, uh, the lighter blue uh, color on the base. Third version here is uh, uh, Rudolf Klimke. So he's got the big uh, uh, anchors on the side, also anchor across the top. Also very interesting, it's got uh, uh, this particular hatchwork type of uh, camo in place. And then the last version you can choose from is um, uh, Kempf. So, and then he's got the big Kempf written on it. So there's no mistaking this one, who's flying it. So there's the four versions. Okay, so very nice. So this is the Fokker DR1 triplane. So this particular kit here, it's a 124 scale version of the triplane. Uh, a lot of people do mistake this and think, oh, it's already been released. But no, this is a brand new, bigger kit. And as you can see, it's a very impressive kit. The photo which is very nice, particularly the uh, detail in the uh, ventilation around the machine guns. There is extra, I don't know if the extra detail, but you can definitely notice the detail that's included. I don't think it's any better than the 30 second scale one, but because it's bigger, it's more noticeable. So finer surface detail, you'll be able to paint in a lot more, particularly wood grain, you can get that looking just magical. So there it is. That is a Fokker DR1 triplane from Ming in 124 scale, four different liveries included, and there's two versions of the kit. So you can get it as a, sta a standard kit, or you can get the special limited edition version, which also comes with the one-to-one -one a replica of the Blue Max uh, medal. So, hope you've enjoyed uh, having a look inside.
this particularly impressive kit. And if you have any questions, please write them down below uh, the screen and we'll get to them as soon as we can and try to help out. So thanks again for watching.